throughout this week, we've gone through some different things, and and we uh, and we sin. We sin against our God who loves us. And so we're going to take this time right now and have a private moment with God and confess our sin. of God Almighty, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus, he gives us the power to become the children of God, and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give thanks for your ministry here at Zion. We ask for your blessings going forward as we kick off our new ministry and outward focus. Help us to better be your hands and feet for those in need and those who need your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from Colossians chapter 1, verses 10 through 20. Walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power, according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. 
and he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent, for in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of the, his cross. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our second reading is from Revelations chapter 21, <coughs> excuse me, verses 1 through 5. Then I saw in a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from every eyes, from their eyes, and death shall be no more. <coughs> Neither shall there be mourning or crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he has and he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise and confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Gospel reading is from St. John, the third chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you, you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and we're going to sing God So Loved uh, based on John 3, 16. And just to share a little short story with you, um, I tutor at an elementary school, and um, it, it's, it's rather heartbreaking to hear you have, a, the kids know that I, I sing in church, and because uh, we have conversations, and they like to talk, and and one day, one little boy just asked, who is God? Would it, why is he so important? And, uh, and so <laughs> we've got to be out there, my friends. Uh, it's, uh, it's, we, we live in a world where he is non-existent and spoken of in homes. And, uh, and so we need to let them know that God loved them so much that he sent his son to die for them. And uh, he's going to come back for us, and they need to know that. So we need to be urgent in our witness.
the screen for pastor's message. I don't even have to read it today. Hi. Hi. I was marooned on an island for five years with this package. And I swore that I would deliver it to you because I work for FedEx. That's very admirable. Thank you. Hey, well, by the way, what's in the package? Huh, nothing really. Just a satellite phone, GPS locator, fishing rod, water purifier, and some seeds. Just silly stuff. Thank you again. You keep up the good work. Oh, that's so sad. If it wasn't true about us. We have a fantastic package, a gift from God, needed to equip us for every daily good work. 90% of all Americans own a Bible, but only 30% read it once a week, even. Can you imagine having such a great package with everything we need and not even cracking it open? Ronald Reagan said, all the problems described in the Bible can be solved by the good things in the Bible. No wonder then that we individually and as a nation are wrestling without God's good gifts. The majority of people in America today think that Sodom and Gomorrah were merry, that Billy Graham preached the Sermon on the Mount, and that Noah was married to Joan of Arc. And in case you're keeping score, none of those are true. Okay. And so we suffer and languish without the good gifts that God wants to give to us. So today I'd like to invite us to have the second of our two-part series on the Word of God. Last Sunday we talked about what is the Bible. And today, very practically, how to read your Bible. And as we get going, I'd like to apologize for at least the four, three or four people in the room who can explain the Bible better than me. I'm so glad you're here. But uh, with them and hopefully all of us, we can find at least one thing to take away, just one thing to be a blessing in your life. And here's your challenge. Find that one thing and tell me what it is on the way out of church today, shall we? 
And as this is a hint to us, prayer is a key to unlocking everything we have in God's good gifts to us. Prayer is a key. And in fact, today we're going to focus our message on three skills and three prayers as we open the package of the Bible. The first prayer and skill, observation. Lord, help me see it in Scripture. The second one, interpretation. Lord, help me understand it. And the third, application. Lord, help me live it. Observation, interpretation, application. Say those three with me. Observation, interpretation, application. And unpacking each of those, starting with observation. Uh, unpacking, opening God's Word, preparing for it is a wonderful gift. And instead of starting with uh, Leviticus, reading it 30 minutes a day, may I suggest you start small and simple? especially if you haven't read the Bible before or in quite some time, just five minutes a day can change your life. Start simply and easy and just as much. If you don't have five minutes every day, uh, maybe we need to revisit our priorities because we always have time for what's important to us. So start small, just five minutes a day. If you like, you can use your portals of prayer. I love portals of prayer right now. I'm using it on a daily basis. It's really good this month. But it is only the writings of man, which does not have supernatural power. It's important, extremely useful, but it is not the inspired word of God. Please use it. Take one home, but don't fail to read the scriptures at the top. Read the scriptures at the top. God gives extra special promise to that. So if you'd like, start by reading a devotion. But may I consider that the Bible has even more power. Don't pass up reading God's word every day. And I invite you to read a Bible translation that works for you. The original languages are Greek and Hebrew. And what we have in English today is a translation of that. If you're just starting reading the Bible, know that the Bible translations go from easy to understand to accurate in almost every word. And every Bible translation we have is somewhere on that. If you're new to the Bible, read the New Living Translation, the NLT. I love it for new Christians. It's fantastic. If you've read the Bible once before, try out the New International Version, the NIV, very useful. We have in the church for a long time. And the ESV, word for word, very accurate. We use that in worship and as we speak out of the Bible today. The most important Bible translation is the one you will read. The most important Bible translation is the one you will read if it's gathering dust on your shelf it's of no use to you. In fact, some Christians and Americans keep a couple Bibles around. I need super blessing on my shelf. I'm... No, it's not like a, a super package you keep that gives you supernatural power unless you open and read it. And as you use your Bible, even if it's for five minutes a day, as you observe it, say, Lord, help me see what you want to show me today. Holy Spirit, help me see what you want to show me today. Start with prayer. The next thing, interpretation. Interpretation. We've done observation. We're now moving on to the second, interpretation. As we dive into and read God's Word, interact with it. Write down, write notes, circle things in your Bibles. And if you didn't bring them today, circle or underline something in one of our readings, go home and write that in your Bible. In fact, if you want to circle a key verse and then put the key points of today's message, observation, interpretation, application, it'll help you understand on Monday what you heard on Sunday. Especially if, like me, you tend to forget stuff, right? So feel free to write it down and revisit it so God can bless you. 
Even use a concordance in the back to look at key words you don't know. And as you read, seek Jesus. Say those two words with me. Seek Jesus. There's a reason this is the exact center of the sermon, because Jesus is the center of our lives, the center of the Bible, and the center of all of human history. It's all about Jesus. The Old Testament prepares us for Him. The New Testament describes life in Him. And sometimes the Bible will say uncomfortable things we don't like to prepare us for Jesus. The law shows us our sin. The gospel shows us our Savior. And I love that the Bible shows the very worst of humanity. In fact, that's how you know it is from God, because if human beings wrote it of their own minds, every human being would look perfect, right? But instead, everybody you read about it in the Bible is deeply flawed. There is only one hero. His name is Jesus. In fact, even the people closest after God's own heart are deeply flawed, just like you and me. David, a man after God's own heart, killed Goliath with one stone, composed the book of Psalms, good king of Israel, had adultery with another man's wife, murdered the guy, order, hit, bit, <laughs> order hits on his enemy from his deathbed, and died in the arms of a teenager. That's just icky, okay? That's terrible. And if that's David, and maybe a little you, then don't run away from that. Be convicted of your sin so you can rejoice in Jesus, your Savior. It's all about Him. Seek Jesus in every word. And if you have a study Bible that can help, open it up to the first pages and it'll tell you where to look for Jesus. And finally, as you read your Bible, even just five minutes a day, pray during it. Lord, what does this mean? What does this reveal about Jesus? What does this reveal about me for today and the coming week? Pray as you read your Bible. And finally, application. Uh, observation, interpretation, application. Lord, help me live it. And there are three things to think about as you apply God's Word. First, reflect for a little after you read. Reflect on God's Word and what you've just heard. Someone said, Eat reading the Bible without reflecting on the Bible is like eating without chewing. Reading without reflecting is like eating without chewing. God's Word is designed to be a blessing to you. Reflect on what it means for you today. If you've prayed about it, the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you. And it may make you uncomfortable. It may help you rejoice in Jesus. It may encourage and inspire you for the life to come. Pray afterwards, Lord, help me live what I've heard. And then act today. How many of you are forgetful? Please raise your hand just like me. That's why I like to act today, because I'll forget it tomorrow. So, write down one idea you've heard. In fact, put in place what you've learned. If you need to confess your sin, if you need to reflect and remember, if you need to call someone else to encourage them, do it today. Lutherans fail on this a lot. We read the Bible and then we don't talk about what it means for us or hold each other accountable to it. Life Light Groups, here's a challenge for you this coming fall. Don't just read it, but then say how the Spirit is moving you to act on it. And then leaders, start next week's session by saying, all right, how did you do? <laughs> all right, here's our challenge and our invitation. Observe, interpret, and apply what God's given you today. And if you didn't catch those prayers, Lord, help me see it. Lord, help me understand it. And Lord, help me live it. Believe it or not, unpacking the package of God's Word is all 
about prayer. Pray before, pray during, pray after, and God will change you as you read His Word. Read the Bible. It will change you. And all God's people said, We now worship Him with our offerings. We rise for prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning with um, several things on our hearts. And uh, first and foremost, we always give thanks for the blessings we have in our lives and in our ministry here. And we give thanks for this church, Lord. Lord, we ask for your blessings on our ministry at Zion, especially as we kick off outward uh, section of our ministry plan. Be with us in our small groups as we uh, discuss this and how to be better the hands and feet of Jesus. Lord, we give thanks for our visitors here at House of Grace Church that's going to be using our facility this afternoon. Lord, be with that church. Be with Pastor Miguel and his wife be with their congregation and the other congregations that are going to join them today. Lord, help him to uh, preach your word in truth and purity and help them to grow, Lord, and reach those that are lost. Lord, we have several petitions we add um, today. Um, firstly, Brian Hood's mother that was struck by a car this, this morning. Um, and has a broken leg, at least as a result of it. Lord, be with her, uh, be with Brian and his family, but help the doctors uh, to attend to her quickly and, and to, to get her out of danger, Lord. Lord, we also lift up Pastor Brady this morning that, um, that you be with him and, and help him to uh, control that um, as he had a seizure. Um, whether it be medication or, or any other ways to, so that he can continue his service here and continue to serve you. Uh, Lord, be with his family as well as they uh, take care of him today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we also ask for uh, healing for Vernon Pritz's sister. He's in the hospital with pneumonia. And uh, also Gina's Gina Landgraf's cousin, Betty Burr, who has been hospitalized after a heart attack. Lord, be with uh, Matthew Rodriguez in pain with uh, kidney issues. Leah Reister's brother-in-law battling cancer. Ashley Reister's co-worker dealing with the death of her father. And also Ashley's friend in ICU after a car accident. 
Lord, be with my wife's father, my father-in-law, is suffering with shingles. Lord, heal him. Lord, be with baby Luna, ECC teacher Sandra's newborn baby, which is it, who is in the NICU. Help her to grow strong and uh, be able to be go to go home. Lord, be with Paula Casper, receiving occupational and home health care. Be with Earl Meyer, who is hospitalized with an infection. Be with Irene Meyer, receiving hospice care. Lord, be with the Coates and the Meyers as they take care of their, their parents. And Lord, also Lonnie Lair, um, back here on Saturday, uh, and, um, and it was here today after being hospitalized with heart issues. Lord, help them to uh, figure out the issue there and, and heal him, Lord. Uh, Lord, in your mercy. Again, Lord, we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord look up, lift up his countenance upon you. I'm sorry, I lost it here. <laughs> May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord uh, make his face shine upon you. See, it's not written. See, Pastor, Pastor Brady can do this. And, but uh, make his face shine upon you and look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Holly, what's our last song? Amen. <laughs> our final song today is Mighty to Save. So if you're able to stand as we close out our service today, and again, just keep Pastor Brady and his family in your prayers today.
that. If any of you are able, we need some help setting up some chairs for House of Grace today for their service and can help Danny out. He'll direct you. Thank you.